Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up. Today I have, guess what? An introduction to Revit MEP video. This has been heavily requested in the past and I figured it was about time to do it on the YouTube format, you know, the free format. And uh, to my core viewers who are a little bit more on the intermediate side of the spectrum, I asked for a little bit of patience. Not everybody had the opportunity to jump into Revit back then. So beginners, now is your chance. We're gonna start with an introduction to BIM, which stands for Building Information Modeling. I'm gonna take you through an overview of how to create a new model. I go in depth into this topic, however, in other videos. So I'm gonna post the end screens at the end of the video, so watch out for those. And I'm gonna give you a very sound advice to learn like a child. You'll see why over time. I'm gonna tell you what Revit is and how it works. We're gonna go over the main differences between Revit and AutoCAD or any other CAD software. I'm gonna showcase some of the Revit capabilities. I'm gonna take you through an overview of the Revit user interface. And we're gonna go a little bit into the project browser, views, families, parameters, links, etc. So it's gonna be a nice all-encompassing uh, introduction to Revit. And then I'm gonna give you some great advice on your next steps. So see you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. Revit has become the king of BIM, whether it's architectural, structural, or MEP. There's something for everyone in Revit. When you're opening Revit for the first time, you'll see your latest models up here and your latest families down here. In our case, we're just gonna jump right into it. We're gonna go under Models and create a new model. For that, we're gonna select a template we're creating a project this time, not a project template. Uh, but many times uh, you'll want to start a project from your company standard template file. Right now we don't have one set up as default, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select one from the Autodesk out of the box templates. And here I can see that we have a commercial default, for example. Let's click OK. And now we're creating a new project, not a new template. Uh, so let's hit OK. And here's a new project, it's completely blank. And right off the bat, I'm gonna give you what I consider the best advice I can give you. I used to be a very heavy AutoCAD MEP user. For over 12 years I used it. And uh, I would say that the best approach to start learning Revit is approaching it like if you have never drafted in a computer. This is the first software that you use. And then if you encounter things that are familiar to you that are similar to AutoCAD, then you know, welcome it and be happy about it, enjoy it. But don't try to force that equivalency because then you're gonna have a hard time. So let's approach this as this is the first time that we're using a computer to design a building systems. As a sidebar, if you're a heavy AutoCAD user, the main difference is that Revit it has a single model for everything, for all the floors, all the ceilings, all the floor plans. It's a huge database that contains not only building elements and drafting elements, but every building element contains properties and parameters. We're gonna see an example in a little bit. So this building is probably a better example. This is the one that I used throughout the tutorial. So if I go into a piping view and I want to select, let's say this hot water pipe right here, that pipe knows a lot about itself. It knows that it's a pipe. It knows that a, it is on level three and it is at one foot above levels three finished floor. It knows its diameter which we can see here, diameter is half inch. It knows that it's a copper pipe type L and is part of a domestic hot water system. 
whereas if I click on this pipe here, it knows that this is a waste glued PVC under a sanitary drainage system and it's one and a quarter inch of, of diameter and it's a PVC pipe. So uh, as you can see, every element has a lot of information about itself and we're not doing lines and arcs anymore. Every part of a building is a real element that has a lot of information attached to it. And that's where the power of Revit comes in. You know, I can quickly do a takeoff of all the pipes in this project and then probably sort them by system or by material. And that is a very powerful tool. A tremendous difference, uh, like I mentioned before, between AutoCAD and Revit is that we have a single model for everything. So here you have level one, level two, and level three within the same model. So everything is part of a single huge database. And then you have elements like this storm drainage uh, riser, which spans several floors from the underground all the way up to the underside of the roof. So going back to the hot water pipe that I was just clicking on a few minutes ago, I can quickly create a schedule of all pipes that are part of a domestic hot water system. And out of that schedule, I can calculate the total volume of the system. And I can use that to calculate the expansion tank for that system, for example. And this is just a note to remind you that if you're watching this, it means that you're not currently at bimitup.com. So you're only getting partial content. If you want the real deal, you can go to bimitup.com and you can book some training there or you can purchase videos either individually or you can buy a whole course. Let's talk a little bit about the user interface here. And um, this will be my properties palette. So let's say you are selecting this pipe here. That's gonna display the properties of that particular element that you have selected. You can change the parameters of this pipe through the properties palette. Uh, that's only one of the ways you can change things in Revit. Uh, in addition to that, you have your project browser here. That's the way Revit organizes your all your views, all your schedules. So for example, if I go under views here, you see that I have views separated into working views, which are the one that I use for modeling and sheet views, which are my plotting views. So if I go under say working views, then I have plans and RCPs so I can, and you know, one thing to keep in mind is that the way the project browser organizes things, it kind of mimics Windows File Explorer, but it doesn't behave the same way. For example, if I try to drag level one from here to here, he won't let me do that. Right, so the way this is organized is that this view has some parameters associated to it that make it fall under working views, plans. And that would be this one. The view usage is a working view. That's why it falls under working view. And then the view type is a plan. So that's why it falls under plans. So if I were to change this from plans to RCPs and I go like this, then this would jump under RCPs. So let me click on do because I don't want to do that. It goes back to plans. We're going to have a separate video on browser organization. For now, let's keep going with the user interface. This is your modeling window right here. And up here you have the ribbon, which is pretty similar to any other Microsoft application. All these tools are organized logically under different tabs. So if I go to systems, anything that has to do with systems will be grouped by panels depending on the tools. So for example, this is plumbing and piping. So you have pipe, you have pipe fittings, pipe accessories. So if you were to go to view, for example, here's where you create new views, new elevations, new sections, new 3D views. You create new schedules, new sheets, you manage your revisions. And then if you go to manage, this will be mostly for like global parameters that you want to set up. Here's where you bring your links. You manage your links like it's equivalent to XRefs in AutoCAD. 
you manage your images, you set project parameters, project information. Now going back to the project browser, you saw that I have my plans and my RCPs here. And I also have some legends here, which are views that you can place in several sheets. Typically you can only place one view under one sheet. But if you want to place the same view under several sheets, you would use a legend. Uh, and also the conventional way that we use legend, like a first page legend where you said, okay, this is pipe up, pipe down, etc. Uh, you also have your schedules here, schedules and quantities, which are used not only for construction document purposes, but also for takeoffs and even manipulation. For example, I could select all the pipes that are on level three if I wanted to and sort them by system and things like that. And then down here you have your sheets. You know, I have fire protection here and I have plumbing here. And then you have your families. Families are everything that you model in Revit. For example, a duct is a family. So here you have all the type of ducts that we have. A pipe is a family. Pipe accessories are a family. So under pipe accessories, you can find, you know, a backflow preventers, valves. You have plumbing fixtures. So all your plumbing fixtures will be here. That's where you would find all these lavatories and toilets. And then, you know, the, the architectural elements are also families. You see how we have walls here, structural foundations, columns, all those are families but primarily we'll be dealing with uh, system families. So this is going to be our main thing here. Right now I have my ribbon simplified so I cannot see HVAC or electrical because right now I'm just dealing with piping so I'm, I'm not interested in seeing all the other systems. You also have your quick access toolbar up here which you can customize. Your view options bar right here and then your status bar right here. But we don't want to spend too much time on that right now. So let's keep moving. And then finally, if I go here under Manage, I go under Manage Links. These are my backgrounds. See, so I'm linking an architectural link model and a structural link model. And these are both uh, Revit files, which would be the equivalent to the old XRefs in, in AutoCAD. So we're not going to spend too much more time on the user interface. I just want to get you guys productive and learning Revit as fast and efficiently as possible. And at BIMITUP.com, you'll be able to book some exclusive training time in a variety of topics. So right here, I'm in the BIM training, and we have two different approaches. We have the Revit MEP Comprehensive, which includes every single topic in Revit that you can ever imagine. And let's say you want some information on HVAC, spacing, zoning, and cooling loads. So you can book some time right here. Or you can also use the Revit MEP professional approach, which is a little bit more to the point, is not as comprehensive as the other one, but it dives in a little bit faster. So if you want to go, let's say, on HVAC, or you want plumbing, you would go on plumbing, and then you can book some time in any of these topics. You can book time for yourself or for your whole staff. We share screens, we share best practices, it's very interactive. So go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com. And if you have enjoyed this video, make sure you like it down there. Subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.